On this episode of Locked On Lightning, the Bolts are back at it tonight in Vancouver. We take a look at Brandon Hagel's season in the last couple of weeks, as well as a Steven Stamkos check-in. All that coming your way on Locked On Lightning. Your Locked On Lightning, your daily podcast on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Lightning, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Adam Danker. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Locked On Lightning. And I just want to remind you all to make us, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form, as well as on our YouTube channel. And I just want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get up to a $100 match on your first purchase. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. So we're talking today about the Lightning getting back up back to it in Vancouver on and what I think is a very important road trip. And then we go on to talk about Brandon Hagel about not only about the season he's had, but his last 10 games. It's kind of an interesting stat line for him. We'll get, we'll dive into more of that. And then we wrap things up on this show with the Steven Stamkos check-in, as I'm sure is everybody's still waiting on bated breath when exactly, if possibly, a deal is going to get done this year, as well as just looking at his stats. You know, do you think maybe the the lingering contract negotiations uh will have any effect on his play. We talk about that as well. So the Lightning are back in action tonight on a very important uh, Pacific Northwest trip as they will go up against the Vancouver Canucks. And I have stressed immensely, not only this year, and not even in the past week when we've talked about this road trip, but also when we look at basically in years past at Pacific Northwest West Coast trips how important it is for the lightning because I like I've said it's it, it's kind of a very good chance for the bolts to kind of get back to what they know what to do when it comes to winning games and playing well and playing consistently well it's always nice for them to go out on a trip like this because you kind of don't have any room for mistakes when it comes down to these trips, because, you know, the, the schedules are kind of a little all over the place. You're playing late every night. Uh, you're, you're out on the road miles and miles away from home. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a good kind of a, a reset. If you want to call it that, you know, the, the lightning haven't been playing particularly badly over the past couple of weeks. I think they've been actually getting a lot better. And thus far the last couple of games, especially the previous game, uh, against the crack and they've played very well and they've continued uh, their incredible style of play which is really just like I've I've kind of equated it to is is just building very slowly throughout the course of the game and and you know not going out there and saying let's let's just score right away let's do this and that kind of just letting the game come to them uh, taking care of the advantages when they are afforded to them and they're playing well against very good teams. You know, the if you want to just scratch off the the loss against the Predators, sure. I mean, at the same time, um, you look at who was in net for Nashville, so you, you kind of understand where that night went, especially with, you know, with the Lightning not rolling out Andre Vasilevsky uh, out of the gates in that one. But they go up against the Vancouver Canucks, who are, <clears throat> excuse me, the second best team points-wise in the Western Conference. They come into tonight's game with a record of 18, 9, and 1 with 37 points. Uh, in their last 10, they are 6 and 4. Their point differential is plus 34. Uh, they currently rank first in the Western Conference in goals forced. So you're going to expect a lot of scoring from this team tonight. And, and it's really going to be a game in which the Lightning, if they don't you know whether they come out or not on a good foot, they're going to have their hands full tonight with with this this roster of 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 Canucks players who are just 
so good, have been so good all year long. A goaltender in Thatcher Demko, who you probably will remember him from, I believe it was the bubble, the bubble year. Uh, he played phenomenal for Vancouver, and he's really still, you know, in the very very early stages of his career. And and when you look at these two teams, these two these two teams statistically, they're very similar. The the Lightning rank third in power play percentage. Whereas Vancouver is coming in with fifth uh, on the PK, the Lightning are eleventh. Vancouver falls off just a little bit, twenty uh, seventh in the league, not even breaking eighty percent. Look at their faceoff percentage; they're sort of neck and neck. They're off by uh, a tenth of a percentage, and then their goals force. Like I said, the Canucks are first in the league. Uh, second in the Western Conference uh, in scoring, but first in the league in goals forced average per game uh, with 3.82 where the Lightning are 12th and goals against average is kind of a little bit of a drop off. They're fifth best in the league where the Lightning are 30th. So a little bit of a, uh, a kind of a, a drop off there for the Lightning, but it's a game in which, you know, we kind of expect the Lightning to carry over uh, things that they've been doing commonly uh, throughout the course of the last couple of weeks. This is a game where I look forward to games like this because, you know, it, I, I love when the Lightning go on road trips or just whether it be out west or out in the Pacific or Canada or, you know, even close on the east, eastern co- uh, east coast. I, I think those are good test games for them. And, and I feel like what we've seen from games past, you know, from like Boston, those kind of games, uh, even the Toronto games. I, I feel like the Lightning always, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's they just play, they just come in with a different mindset. I I always feel like they always, for the most part, show up for those games. And I don't think that they really need to come in with really much of a game plan other than the one that they've been bringing in recent games. I think what it comes down to it, the Bolts really just need to stick to what they know. They don't really need to worry about Brock Bozer. They don't really need to worry about Connor Garland or JT Miller. You just got to stick to what you could do on your own defensively along the boards. Uh, this would be a very good game in which the Lightning, if if they could get it going early on with, with just sh- uh, shutting down the shooting lanes, blocking shots, uh, that's really going to work in their favor, and it's going to help them in the takeaway game. It's going to help them in the neutral zone game. It's going to frustrate the heck out of Vancouver. And this is going to be a game where I firmly believe, you know, if everything goes right in terms of both teams going out there and executing, I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. And I'm not just saying that because you have Vasilevsky and Thatcher Demko in opposite nuts. I just think that, these are two teams that I think that are going to go in tonight's matchup. One who's really just playing out of their minds right now, and another one who's starting to get it together. You might see some heavy hits and some um, some wild sequences early on, but I think once both teams settle down, and especially once that init- that first goal is scored, uh, it doesn't matter which team, I think you're going to see both teams playing c- very conservative throughout the course of this game. It's going to be very much feeling like a playoff atmosphere there out in Vancouver. So, you know, if I had to place kind of a, I, I, I guess, a bet or or somewhat of a uh, a prediction on this game, I, I would say probably it's going to be like a, a 3-2 game, something along those lines. Um, I would imagine the over-under for this game is probably going to be like five and a half, uh, so, which would probably be a little bit, I, I think that's probably league average for for sports betting lines, um, but yeah, I, I think really what it comes down to if the Lightning could kind of just do the things that we saw them do in the game against Seattle, dominate the faceoff circle, block shots, and just limit the mistakes on their end, and maybe punch in a, a power play goal or two in this game. I think they're setting themselves up per, for a pretty good night, and I'm set, and setting themselves up for another one. So. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that. Um, I'm expecting a win from this one, especially anytime Vasilevsky's in net. Uh, he hasn't played in a couple of days, so you know that's also a good thing. 
Um, and he's coming off a good performance against a very good Seattle Kraken team. So uh, we're going to keep our, our eyes peered towards that game tonight, and we're going to look forward towards uh, in the following segments. Uh, we're going to be talking about Brandon Hagel, you know, what kind of season he's had. Uh, I think he's due for a goal surge. He's been kind of he, – he's only scored one goal over his last 10 games, and he's been getting a lot of good opportunities. Uh, and he's a player that just goes chasing for them. So he's definitely going to make – and create chances for himself. And then later on in the episode, we're going to be talking about Steven Stamkos. You know, where does he sit with this Lightning team? Um, do you think that maybe him not having a contract yet is kind of affecting his ability or his 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 performance right now? We get into all of that in just a bit. But first, I want to talk about one of our sponsors today, and that is our friends over at eBay Motors. Now, listen, a new Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy. It is also what keeps your ride or die alive. Well, guess what? eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. So as always, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen of the day if you haven't already done so please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form we are also available on youtube subscribe to the channel hit that thumbs up button below this video as well as comment below let us know how you're feeling about this team going in tonight's game against the vancouver canucks as well as let us know how you feel about the player that we're going to be talking about right now and that is great uh Brandon Hagel. I, I always get Brandon Hagel and Braden Point. It's, it's confused when I say those two names. I don't know why. It's always jumbled in my head. But we're talking about Brandon Hagel, and he's had a little bit of an interesting year. Uh, you know, with the expectations were high for him. And, you know, through 29 games this year, 10 goals, 16 assists, that, of course, amounts to 26 points. And the thing that's been interesting about him lately, if you look at his last 10 games, because really, you know, in the NHL, when you're looking at any player except maybe Nikita Kucherov, who's just having a insane last 10 games, you uh, you, you kind of more so look at their 10 games instead of their, their really their full season as a whole to assess how they're going. Uh, his last 10 games, he's one goal, seven assists, eight points, plus minus of plus two. Um He's his shot percentage is way down. He's he's only at four point three percent. His time his average time of ice per game is at barely over nineteen. Which you know take it. I I would say you know maybe take that with a little grain of salt as we all are accustomed to. Uh, John Cooper loving to play his his first line out there more times than not, and just over I think at times just over playing them. And I would like to really see Brandon Hagel at 20 uh, on any given night. But the thing about Brandon Hagel, and, you know, some might be a little concerned with that, is that the thing is with him is that, you know, he's had a lot of good, good chances, I think. When you look at how he plays his game, he, he really goes out there and kind of sets things up for himself. You know, we kind of talk about it a lot with Nikita Kutrov, how he really – creates chances for other teammates as well as himself but like uh hagel is kind of different i feel like hagel is kind of just more times than not barrels in at 100 miles per hour down towards the crease and kind of just tries to let it fly and you know that's a good thing but i i would also like to see him especially as the season goes on because we saw kind of and i know i'm comparing completely different styles of play and different players and hagel has way more scoring talent than this player I'm about to mention. But we kind of saw this kind of sequence <clears throat> in terms of being a player, creating chances for themselves, 
scoring from low and and you know having the 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 know-how to score i kind of reminds me of when ross colton was here especially the last two years in tampa bay where you know we knew that he could score we knew he could do this that and the other thing and he went through long stretches of of not scoring in it and it really affected him and i'm with Brandon Hagel, you know, I'm not saying that's going to be the case, but he is a player who plays with his heart on his sleeve, who's a very emotional player. And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I look at it as he's a little bit struggling right now. Now, what what does John Cooper do to kind of get him going? Now, ideally, I would love to see him get put on the first line full time. I think that when he played with Kucherov in point last year, especially, it really helped him out. It it really did wonders for him. I mean, he scored 30 goals, and I know he has 10 already, so it looks like he's on track to, to surpass that number. But, you know, when you score one goal in your last 10 games um, and you have a ton of assists, for him, a player who really his main job here is to score goals, um, it can be a little concerning, and I and I think that I'm sure that that is a conversation that is being had in the coach's room when they're looking at the lines and how to dish out players on certain lines. And I think that really that is the right move to go. I think that really they should play him more full time on the first line because you know with with Kucherov he he could do, he could do wonders for your game, and but I think that the hesitation there to put him there full time. Other than the fact that you have the veteran Steven Stamkos, who uh, John Cooper loves throwing him on that line with point and coach. I think it's also Stamkos's game is different from coach and points. You know, point is more of a guy who likes to get into the slot and shoot from there and, and really create chances on the rush. Cooch is kind of a guy who plays all over the place and Stamkos, as we all know. Uh, just loves to park himself in that in that circle and just let it sling on any of the one timers that are given to him. Whereas point uh, Hagel is more so of, I would say probably in the line of what Braden Point does, and I think that that is why there's so much hesitation there, or maybe just it hesitancy to 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 put him there full time because you don't want to have two guys that do the same thing. And I get it, but at the same time, if you know you're, this is kind of a future guy, you you know that this is a guy who is going to be able to be on this team for a very long time and, and you have faith in him to be a 40-goal scorer or even more than that, um, and you want him to develop his game, then just, you know, screw it. Just throw him on there now. Um, and, you know, a lot of this goes into the conversation we'll have a little bit later on about Steven Stamkos and, you know, where his season is going. But I think that really, you know, as well as the Lightning have been playing, I don't think that putting Hagel on the first line is really going to disrupt anything. I think that, if anything, if you have those three guys and Hagel, Cooch, and Point on the first line, really all it does is just reinforce guys who just are not only quick, but could very, could do a lot of things in terms of playing defense. And um, not saying that Stamkos isn't good at playing defense, but you know, Stamkos isn't exactly as fast as Point, Hagel, and Cooch. You know, he's some might say he's not as agile, but at the same time, he's a bigger body forward. Um, so, you know, you do have your trade offs there if you're throwing Stamkos on there. But yeah, I think that, you know, if, if John Cooper is really set in looking at Brandon Hagel to get going, because, you know, eventually it's going to come to a point where really him not scoring goals is going to be an issue. Yeah, he, he's, accumulated a bunch of assists over his last 10 and has eight points total to to really show for it i think at the end of the day you kind of want that number a little bit higher or at least kind of distributed a little bit differently as we see just to compare him with Braden point like i said because they're kind of somewhat similar in the way they play i Braden point has five goals over his last 10 games and i think that if hagel is kind of in that yard if he's kind of doing maybe six and two or four and four whatever the case may be that's fine but it, it is to me at least 
I think, and it should be to some Lightning fans, a little concerning that your guy who uh, is supposed to be one of your top goal scorers on your team, uh, really not accumulating goals. So I think really the best thing that the Lightning can do, and and obviously this is a situational thing. I think it depends on who they're playing on any given night and how that team is playing on that night as well. I think that really at the end of the day, I think it would be beneficial not only to Brandon Hagel, but the team if he's playing on the first line uh, going forward. So we'll keep a lookout for that. And when I say, you know, he playing with them, I mean full time, you know, not being thrown into sequences here and there with Cooch and Point. So hopefully that sooner rather than later that happens. So we'll keep an eye on that. And coming up next, we'll be talking about Steven Stamkos. You know, what is just checking in with his season. I'm very curious as to what everybody thinks about him, you know, especially with the whole contract thing going on. Uh, it was There was a little bit of a rumor I saw about a week ago that we didn't get a chance to get to, but I want to talk about it now coming up. Uh, you know, a little bit of a dollar figure that I heard about uh, that he could potentially get from the Lightning, especially with the potential for the cap going up next season. So we'll talk about that in just a bit. But first, I want to wrap things up with one of our friends, and that is our friends at the sleeper app now the nhl season is in full swing and nikita kucherov could very well score 50 goals and if that happens and everyone else is playing well guess what the lightning could very well lift another stanley cup and you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper the official daily fantasy app of the locked on nhl network sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contest. Now, all you have to do is pick studs like Point, Hagel, Cooch, if they'll record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. So to win 100 times better on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Lightning fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your pick so you could start winning big. Use promo code Locked On NHL and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. So wrapping things up on the show, as always, I want to thank everybody for making us your first listen. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form. You could also follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go ahead, drop a comment below this video. Hit that thumbs up button. So if you want to ask a question, we'll answer on the next next episode, as well as, you know, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. So a lot of people who may not know about the show or just don't know how to find us, uh, could find us on YouTube and I'll reach them. So, yeah, uh, we're wrapping things up here, talking about Steven Stamkos, who I have been a very big critic of, I will say, over the last couple of years. Um, I feel like, and and I'll preface this, obviously, by saying that he is one of the, the best players, if not the best player that has ever played for this franchise. And I cannot overstate the importance of him to the lightning franchise and what he means to this franchise, especially over his entire tenure here and even the last five years. And, but I will say as in life, as in also in hockey, good things come to an end. And I think that when you look at Steven Stamkos and kind of what's going on with him, he's on the last year of his deal. Um, and it doesn't look like right now that the Lightning and him have any sort of commonplace when it comes to what a potential extension might look like. And when he was asked about it early in the year, he was not happy. And as he should be. I mean, listen, he's the captain of this team. And I'm sure, as well as everyone, he wanted to get a deal done before coming into the season so he could just worry about that. But that's not the case. And I think part of the reason why the Lightning wanted to wait was because they wanted to see what he was going to, what what the salary cap was going to look like. And I think that that is something that really is going to help this team. Uh, The salary cap next year is going to rise to 
$87.7 million, which is a good sign for the Lightning because they are way up against it. And <laughs> they they really need to make some ad- additions in the offseason as well as possibly figure out a situation uh, with their captain. Now, I, I'm very curious as to, you know, when we evaluate Steven Stamkos, who, just to remind you on the season that he is having through 26 games, he has 10 goals and 26 points. His plus minus has been atrocious, but it is what it is at this point. I'm I'm more so just looking at the points and, you know, what he is able to do for the players around him and just how he's playing, how he's moving around. And my curiosity with him lies more about what's going on between his ears because, like I said, I can't imagine that not having any sort of inkling as to what might happen with the contract um extension especially with the trade deadline coming up in a couple of months i'm curious as to what his state of mind is and you know if the lightning were not playing as well as they were recently i'm curious as to maybe how what kind of chatter would be had about Stamkos right now? You know, I I think that there are a lot of individuals, including myself, that believe that if they can't get a deal, especially if it's a deal where it's going to be mutually beneficial for both parties, then you kind of have to start to look in other directions. You kind of have to start honestly have the bad conversation with Stamkos and say, you know, we might have to move you at the deadline because, you know, we're not we're not going to pay what you want, unfortunately. And I heard last week that I think it was in an article or something. I think it was. Yeah, it was in an article. I forgot where it was, but the article said or or maybe it was even Twitter. The article said that he could potentially get. I think it was six AAV for about four years, which amounts to about like 24 mil i my thing with that is that and you know if if money was no object and the lightning had a little bit more cap space sure let's give him the money you know like i said we can't overstate how important he is to the franchise how important he is to the locker room but he's gonna be he's gonna be 34 in february and the thing with him that really makes me nervous, especially about giving him a deal like that, especially where the Lightning have to continue making additions. They have to continue spending money in certain areas. The thing that worries me is, and you kind of saw it, he had 100 points a couple of seasons ago in 21-22. But you look last year, he, he played 81 games, which is great. He's played... Uh, two straight 80 game seasons for the first time since 2000, 2010, 11 to 12. The thing is, is that you're starting to see the, the total go down points drastically. You know, he was almost, he was about 22 off from the 100 points last year. And then the issue with that is, is that, and, and I've stated this multiple times, is that his style of play with the way that the NHL is going, it's not that kind of league anymore where you could just sit there and not move in the circle and just kind of have somewhat the offense revolve around you. And it, it's not that kind of league where you could just beat, you know, a, a goaltender with a with a one timer almost every other play. It's not that kind of league anymore. The goaltending is getting better. The defense is getting better. Uh, the players are definitely getting bigger and and just all around better players. And and it's not that kind of league. It's more of a finesse league. It's more of a skill league now. And unfortunately, that style of play is isn't going to get you uh, six mil a year or or twenty four million, whichever how they want to structure that. I mean, I would doubt they give him six years. I would if I was Julian Brees' boss and I'm talking to Steven Stamkos and his agent, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say, listen, like you're going to be 34 in February. By the time, you know, if you, if you want to give us a friendly deal, you know, I, I would say, and this might be, you know, 
like I said, I say with this, with the utmost respect for him and what he's done and, you know, what kind of player he is, because I still believe he could be an effective player on this team. I don't know if he's a first round, uh, first line forward anymore um, with the way that this team is kind of the direction that it's headed in with Nick Paul, Brandon Hagel, Anthony Sorelli. Um, I don't know if he's even going to be in a couple of years, a second line forward. I think that, you know, maybe third line is more of his, his bag in a couple of years uh, and his style of play. But if I had to, to put a number on him, a deal, give him a deal right now, depending on, you know, right now today, we have to get a deal done today. I would say three and a half for four. I think that is a good middle ground. And, you know, maybe you give him a little bit of bonus money there too. Some incentives in that contract as well. I mean, he's got to play 80 games, let's say, giving him incentives for, I would say, 90 points, uh, 35 goals, something like that. Uh, I, I think that's a fair number where you got to make it very clear to Stamkos that, listen, we got to continue to make the team better so it's in a good spot when you are no longer in the league. And I get it, Stamkos, at the end of the day, doesn't care about that. I, the only thing he cares about is signing a contract that is going to make him the most money that he can, and that's understandable. So as for that possibly affecting his performance, I don't think it is, but I also don't think that we have seen enough of his play to where he is really kind of, started to shift in another direction other than just being that slap shot player um, that he is that one time scorer that he is. So I would have to wait the, the rest of the year. I would imagine that the lightning are probably not going to get a deal done at any point uh, during the regular season. And I would kind of hope it doesn't get to the point to where they got to trade him. Um, but if the lightning are in need of other pieces at the deadline and they could get that, uh, as for what those pieces could potentially be, that remains to be seen. Um, as we get closer to the deadline, obviously, I'm sure we'll start to hear names and start to definitely hear Stamkos's name being shopped around. So you could hear all that discussion about that here on Locked on Lightning. So as always, I implore you to subscribe to the podcast, give us a follow wherever podcasts are distributed in audio form, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, and hit that notification button if you are watching or listening to us on an app-based streaming service so we'll be back tomorrow to hopefully talk about a, uh, a win against the vancouver canucks and look forward to the rest of this pacific norwest road trip for the tampa bay lightning so in the meantime that's been it for this episode of locked on lightning part of locked on podcast network i'm your host adam danker i'll talk to you in the next one